So who is Catholic Relief Services? CRS is the official international humanitarian relief and development agency of the Catholic community in the United States. We work around the world responding to both natural emergencies like typhoons and earthquakes, as well as humanitarian emergencies like assisting people who have been displaced due to civil war. We also do long-term development work in agriculture, water security, health, education, accompanying communities as they work for a better future. We currently do this work in over 110 countries around the world. And all of our work is done in partnership with the local communities and local organizations. This is essential to our commitment to uphold dignity and our belief that people should be the leaders of their own development. We serve on the basis of need, not creed, race, or nationality. As a Catholic organization, we believe that all people have inherent dignity and that it's our duty to uphold that dignity, no matter who they are, where they come from, or what they believe. And we've been in operation for more than 75 years. Our new U.S. strategy to form chapters around the U.S. started in 2019, and we now have over 80 chapters with 500 members. Our mission is to promote human development and dignity around the world. The work is holistic. It's a long-term, dynamic process that facilitates collaboration and engagement from the individual to the family, to the community, and then to the regional, national, and international level. We're looking to promote transformative and sustainable change, whether in emergency response and recovery or development projects aimed to improve social cohesion, agriculture, health, education, water security, or youth development. In our US strategy, we've started a movement of people working together to end global poverty through campaigns focused on the most pressing global issues and chapters who delve even deeper to organize and do advocacy and community giving actions. We know that the desire to serve is not enough. We have to act collaboratively to bring about real improvements in people's quality of life and genuine engagement in building peace and justice. We're excited to share more with you about the work CRS is doing and how you can be a part of it. So how do we do our work overseas? As I mentioned, our work is holistic. While it's easy to categorize our projects and say we do agriculture projects, nutrition, education, water security, our programs are really designed with local communities using a framework called Integral Human Development. This framework is rooted in Catholic social teaching and seeks to promote the good of every person and the whole person. It's cultural, economic, political, social, and spiritual. The primary outcome that we seek is human dignity, that people are able to lead full and productive lives, meeting the basic physical needs and living their lives in an atmosphere of peace and social justice. It looks to identify strategies based on people's quality of and access to assets, which are the resources that people have to work with. Also looking at the institutions, rules and social norms that people live within and take into account risks that threaten lives and livelihoods. This is to say that while we have an education project, for example, we understand that a child's education is not complete if she or he does not have access to clean water or proper nutrition or even the language of instruction. CRS designs its projects to address all of the root causes of global poverty. As an example, I'd like you to meet Morzal. She's a 10-year-old girl studying at a CRS-supported school in Garmab Oya in rural Afghanistan. Garmab Oya is nearly 10,000 feet high in Afghanistan's mountains and at least a 15-hour drive on unpaved roads from the capital of Kabul. There are no shops, no electricity, and barely any phone service. But three years ago, Garmab Oya got its first school. My parents told me that no one in my family has ever been to school, Morzal told us. If I continue my studies, maybe I can be a teacher here one day. Morzal is an ethnic Hazara. It's a minority in Afghanistan that although the country's third largest group is often excluded from national services. The closest government school is a two hour walk away, either by crossing through mountain passes that are home to wolves or wild dogs, or by taking an unpaved road where deadly accidents and robbery are commonplace. The war has also taken its toll on the rural community. Morzal's mother, pictured here, Halima said, we live close to the front line, so there's always a threat. 
Sometimes during the night, the men of the village go to the mountaintops to see if the Taliban are coming. Morzal says that she started writing about her fears of war. After school, she sits by the window in her family's living room, surrounded by relatives chatting and drinking tea. With her notebook spread out on the floor, it's her schoolwork that comes first, followed by her personal writing. It's made me more confident, she says. It's like talking to a good friend. CRS's education project in Afghanistan not only provided access to quality primary education, but trained local community members to take ownership of the classroom, conducted school improvement projects to ensure access to drinking water and hygiene by building latrines. It also promoted community literacy by starting a community library, a space which was also used to conduct training for farmers on improved agriculture and livelihood practices. So how did we get started as an organization? I wanna give you a brief history of how we think as an organization so that you can understand our US strategy. We got started in 1943 as war relief services created by the US bishops to help thousands of World War II survivors and refugees. Over the years, we've grown our expertise and the fields in which we work. We've also grown as an organization, learning to respond to the sign of the times. As an example, many of you might, might be familiar with the Rwandan genocide in 1994. During this period of 100 days, nearly half a million people were slaughtered. This moved CRS to re-examine our role in world events and rediscover Catholic social teaching. We established the Justice Lens as a way of looking at our programming to ensure that it not only meets the immediate needs, but also asks, what does a just world look like and how can we achieve this mission through our work? Shifting to today, right now our brothers and sisters around the world are facing large complex problems. One in nine people around the world experience hunger and nearly half of all deaths in children under the age of five are caused by malnutrition. An unprecedented number of people have been displaced from their homes, more than 80 million people. Levels of violence are at a 25 year peak, driving 80% of humanitarian needs in our world today. So in the same way, CRS's US strategy came about as a response to the story of now, what's happening in our world today.